I would bet that if you researched their family background and you started going the fathers and the mothers and started finding out their parents, their grandparents, their grandparents, stuff like this, and you started looking for uh, criminal records and stuff like this, one of them, at least one of them, is going to have a family with some pretty bad characters in it, meaning possibly psychopaths, and it's been passed down to Joel Jr. Joel Jr. looks, I mean, he fits the, the, the description of a psychopath perfectly. I don't think this was an emotional crime. I think Joel completely lacks emotion, period. He's completely antisocial psychopath. And I think that, you know, just like other psychopaths, they'll tell you they murdered because they wanted to feel human. They understand they're different than us. They do not get the important part of life. They don't have it. There's no, there's no use living without emotional connection and relationships and, and love and things like this. There's just no, no, it's no use. Uh, it, it's like just working hard for a fruitless tree to grow a fruitless tree. Uh, and so typically the psychopaths will kill people because it's now they feel kind of human. They need that much intense experience and emotions to just maybe feel a little human. Oh, I feel a little emotion in there. It's amazing. It's so horrific. The, the, the murders and everything was just disgusting. He doesn't blink. He doesn't care when his family testifies. He didn't even care when he got sentenced to life in prison. He wanted the death penalty, and he there's zero affect, none, frozen, doesn't care, no remorse, no guilt, no shame, nothing. It's just a trip to watch it every time. Every time I watch Psychopaths, it's a trip. This guy was very, um, very high spectrum, meaning he would test very high on psychopathy and very low functioning meaning he can barely take care of himself. The reason he had it all laid out, um, it was very obvious. This was at the same time that the parents said, we're not going to support Joel anymore. They told Joel at 28, you need to start taking care of yourself financially. They were completely footing the bill, completely spoiled the hell out of him. I don't think that he did all this because they spoiled him and he was a spoiled brat or anything like that. I think this is genetic psychopathy. And usually that means it was triggered by something. He might have some type of trauma in his life. I don't know. But I think he thoroughly enjoyed this. I think he enjoyed his plan. I think that nothing would have satisfied him better for this plan to have worked out. I think he's proud. I think he's proud of it. And, and it's just, uh, you know, it's a hard thing to understand how someone can be so different. But, uh. Still, all the same, it's interesting. Uh, thank you, Will. I hope that uh, helped you out, my little opinion. I uh, keep asking, though. Interesting case is going to be more developments, I'm sure. A lot of times they'll do, um, they'll explore the brain of these mur murderers if they put them to death, but they didn't. He has only life, so maybe at some point when he does die, maybe they'll do an autopsy. But you can see psychopathy in brain scans and stuff like this. I, 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 I can't do I guarantee it. And I don't think sociopath. I think he was born that way. Thank you, Willa. Uh, Barbara, don't know where you're from. Tell us your locations, please. Thanks. Bar uh, David, I'm married to a man who has become terribly abusive. He tells me I'm worthless, ugly, fat, points out my insecurities, has recently started hurting me physically. Then he will apologize and be nice. I'm in a trauma bond. I feel addicted to this person. I'm really torn and I am so sorry, Barbara. This guy is extremely unstable and he is extremely dangerous. Just by the little you told me, this guy is so dangerous. He's going to hurt you so much, Barbara, and he's going to possibly go too far. And I didn't mean to... Uh, have this question right out after the last one, but uh, you should be petrified of him. And I don't know if you are. I don't know if you are. Um, we might be very confused and think that we love him and that he loves us. And uh, I can't, it, it, please get help. Please, please get help and all kinds of support that you can get. Document this stuff, fill out police reports, get a, uh, 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 what's it called? Restraining order. I hope you don't have children. If you do, they need to be in therapy immediately. 
and away from him. Call the police, Barbara. I hope you find self-worth enough to call the police next time he even stands in your way or shouts in your face. That is illegal in this country. I don't know where you're from. You didn't tell us, but um, this is danger. Might be the most danger you ever have or invited in your life. And you're married to him. Run. There is no working this out. You cannot expect a human being who purposefully abuses people and objectifies them and exploits them to expect them to just change and see the humanity in people and stop looking at you like an object but now a human being because that's not him. People do not act like this that value human beings and emotional connection. Okay, He's not going to change that part of who he is. And I don't care how long these golden periods are, you know what I mean? When he tells you he's sorry and you get that rush of hormones coming back and everything's great and you just hope it lasts, you are playing with fire and you are going to get burned and it's going to get worse. And if you leave him and go back, it's going to get very worse. I'm sorry, Barbara. You need help very badly, very badly. Okay, please find help, please, and more than one person, um, so that you can have clarity on what's really going on, so that you can be safe and know how to do that, okay, and then start healing from your past so we can have healthy relationships in your future. This is sad every time I hear this, every time I hear this, because there's reasons we got into a relationship with this, with a person this, this sick and it's a lot of people don't find out those reasons or heal these things and sadly enough a lot of people stay in these relationships because they're addictive they're dependent your trauma bond means dependency trauma bond is the up and downs of this relationship the turmoil the instability the i hate you and i love you and i never want to see you again and i, I want you forever and i you're no good and you're really good and you're ugly and you're pretty and you're, you know what I'm talking about. This has become, this has made your brain dependent, meaning you don't know how to raise your hormones on your own anymore. You are dependent on this sick person to stop abusing you and making you feel good. It's not going to get better on its own, and it's not going to get better with him. I hope you believe you are worth getting the help that you need, Barbara. Good luck. Good luck. Maybe some of you guys can go down there and give Barbara some words of encouragement. So many of you are so good at that. Thank you. Ramisha. I don't know where you're from. Please tell us your locations, people. Thank you. I think I am a covert, altruistic narcissist myself. And I'm sure I make mistakes, but I don't do evil things. I help and be a nice girl so others would appreciate me. Or maybe I am a codependent, struggling to find my identity. Any help? Thank you. Yeah, I can help you by understanding that we don't diagnose ourselves. Okay? That is extremely damaging. And I also want you to know, Ramisha, that this is very common amongst victims of narcissistic abuse. Is we wonder if we're the narcissist. Somebody is, right? We're so enmeshed, we don't know who's who. This is a bad relationship. It must be me. Because me now is both of you. Right? You don't know where his feelings end and yours begin. You said, I don't know if I'm a codependent. There's no such thing as a codependent. It's not a label. It's not even a diagnosis. It's behaviors. Um, very codependent. Very. Um, it sounds like. Sounds like. So, I, and, and, and just, just, just by what you're telling me about what you think makes you a narcissist is, is not common amongst narcissists, just want to let you know. Not too altruistic. Some can be, and it's fake. And, uh, and, and you help, and you're nice to people. Yeah, this is, especially in your interpersonal, your closest relationships, you don't exploit them, you don't abuse them. That's, that's, I hope I helped. I mean, I don't know how to help more because I don't know you and, and I'm not a, 
uh, a doctor and a therapist, like I've said, um, get help, Ramisha. Go find a mental health professional that can diagnose you and tell you and give you this answer. No reason doing this and wondering and wondering and wondering for years. Okay? Please find help. You, even just to go find that out. Gosh, isn't it worth it? To understand who you are? But your identity, start now finding out who you are. And never give up till the day you die. Okay? Thank you, Ramisha. And I'm so sorry for the way you're feeling. I'm sorry. Nero Zero. Please tell us your locations, everybody. Thank you. I seem to only date groomers. What can I do to fix this problem? Also, why is it I don't listen to my gut when I feel that there is an issue with these guys? So, you only date groomers. And I imagine people grooming you for abuse later on. Uh, and you don't listen to your gut when there's an issue, that's your body. Emotions are your body doing things. And when we are in relationships like this, it's typically f from being emotionally neglected as a child. And so we cut off emotions. It feels bad in our childhood. We were neglected. You know, that bad, empty, lonely feeling in your stomach. And, and then you start getting anxiety and depression. And we're afraid of what's going to happen. And these kinds of things makes us, if we don't know how to process and fix this and stop it, especially danger, right? We don't know how to fight it and run. We fawn and freeze. We need to learn how to protect ourselves and stuff like this. But more importantly, you need to learn how to process your feelings and emotions. And that's a major part of who you are. So I'd start really, really increasing your, your, your self-stability, your sense of who you are and finding out who you are, okay? Learning how to accept your emotions and what to do to start protecting yourself in dangerous, emotionally dangerous situations instead of just cutting off, that feels bad. That feels bad, forget it. And that's where that cognitive dissonance comes in. I have, I feel horrible, I don't know how to change it, I don't know how to protect myself, I don't know how to stop what I'm doing in danger, and I feel helpless and hopeless. Kind of feel like in a fear cage, right? And so we start lying ourselves to cope. It's gonna stop, I deserve this, he's just drunk, I, you know what I mean? And that's where the cognitive dissonance comes in, and here we are. Um, this is, sounds like emotional neglect in childhood. So learn what that is and, and examine your childhood and try to heal from it. And then learn how to meet your emotional needs. Okay? Learn what a healthy, loving, growing, functional relationship is. And you'll be okay. But we need to understand and see our life kind of like a whole movie from beginning till now and until it really makes sense. It really, really helps to do that. And you can identify the problems you need to fix and heal from this. Okay? Start becoming more independent. Thanks. Next one is from Julius Jones. Hello. And I don't know where you're from. Please tell us your locations, everybody. Let us know where you're at. Thank you. After I left my ex-narc, I exposed her for being a narc. She tried to hoover me once, and I cursed her out bad to the point she cried. Now she went into hiding. Haven't seen her for a month. I'm still no contact. Should I expect to hoover again, or am I clear? Uh, thank you for your question, Julius, but... I, I can't see the future. And, and you just said, should you expect? Why not? Why not? How about we just know, or we just come up with, what do you want to do? So what do you want, Julius, if she contacts you again? You never want to talk to her again. You don't want to see her. You don't want to hear from her. So block all avenues, okay? And however other places that you can't control, like she may come knock on your door, right? What do you want to do? What do you want? If you want nothing, which I suggest nothing, then don't answer it. Realize that everyone that knocks on the door, one of them in the next couple few months might be her. Um, if you're going to keep your phone number, then she might call you. What do you want to do if you answer the phone? It's her. What are you going to do if you call and you see it's her? What are you going to do if you answer it and it's her? What are you going to do if she gives you an email? And the best way to know what to do is to know who you are. What do you want? How do you feel? What do you need? And what do you value? If you value respect and respecting other people, then I wouldn't go, you know, hurt her. That won't feel good if that's who you are, right? So we don't need to yell at her and call her a narcissist and tell her she's a piece of crap and, you know, all this stuff. We don't need to do that, right? It, it doesn't serve you. And then we feel more guilt and shame, okay? Keep her away. Keep her out of your life. 
be careful of what we do, actually. Um, I, I get people that, <laughs> I get this a lot. I get people saying, you know, my ex has been contact, you know, doesn't leave me alone for five years. It's like, geez, really, five years? Yep, they always call me and I got to sit there and listen to their BS and they, they tell me that they're all changed and they don't drink anymore and they go to church now. And I'm like, why are you listening? Why are we listening? Why are we talking to them? Oh, because I want to be nice. And I, Well, we got to start being nice to ourselves and respecting ourselves. And somebody who's abused us, right, uh, doesn't respect you so you have the respect for yourself for just leaving them out out of your life right relationship is over i know some people think it's really neat to be in contact with all your exes still but not so much sometimes especially with people like this yeah i know that we feel guilty when we ignore them and we feel bad if they hurt because of us and you know it's it, we can't have everything perfect what's the most important is who you are Stay true to your values. Give yourself what you need. Know what you want. Okay, Julius? What do you want? And play these scenarios out and be prepared. Be prepared. If you think that she's going to come to your work, tell people at your work. If you see her, tell her to leave. If, you know, this and that, know exactly what you're going to do, where you're going to go. Okay? I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Thank you. Please keep asking me questions, Julius. I noticed I saw a bunch of other people uh, replying to you and giving you advice, and I'd like to see that. Thanks, everybody. And the Pope. Well, I was going to say from the Vatican, but you're from Ayr, Ireland. I think I'm saying that right. Ayr or Ir? Maybe you can correct me. Oh, Ayr or Ir from Ireland, I believe. I'm not sure. I don't know if that's a city or if that's your name. Let me know. Um, hi, David. Good work. Thank you. Do you think analyzing personality disorders is harmful? Like it overloads your mind with it. I'm educated on the disorders and I'm grateful for your work. I, I don't think education is harmful. Period. <laughs> right? Um, that's, you know, gosh, I just left myself open for that, right? Educating on how to do something bad to people. Yeah, okay. Analyzing personality disorders is harmful. Well, it can be if you're analyzing your abuser in person because I've seen people do that I've seen people give me the story of oh I just keep my abuser in my life because I'm learning so much about personality disorders by talking to them no no, no, no. no you're not <laughs> you're keeping somebody that you have a dependent relationship with in your life and BSing yourself and other people so anyways just studying personality disorders look th this is something that that is very common after we go through trauma abuse Right, we focus on the abuser. You are in probably a very dependent relationship, addictive. Your brain's gonna keep thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking, just like ex heroin addicts and ex alcoholics think about drugs and alcohol. A lot. A lot. And we have anxieties, and we believe that thinking about this more and more and more and more is gonna calm our anxiety and sometimes can make it worse. But what's happening is we're focusing on not us. Not us. And that's common. Okay, especially in the beginning. Okay, so what what helps, what, what is mandatory, is that we eventually focus on ourselves and introspect. Okay, and this causes depression and it hurts and that's why we don't want to do it. But it's how we heal. This has got to hurt. This has got to hurt. It has to. Imagine if falling off buildings didn't hurt. <laughs> falling off heights didn't hurt. There'd be people falling off buildings all the time, repeatedly. <laughs> uh, it didn't bother them, didn't do nothing, didn't hurt. Well, then it's not dangerous anymore, is it? This is dangerous. That pain is telling you something needs to be fixed. Don't do this again, okay? So that's what we got to do. You learn all you want about personality disorders. My, my education never stops. I've been studying personality disorders, geez, six years, I think, maybe more. And, uh, and, and I still do, did today, studied psychopaths today. So I find it extremely interesting, but I'm not doing that in place of focusing on myself and healing and recovering and, and, and finding out who I am and stuff like this. Okay. It's just an interesting topic now. Very. And it's a part of my work. Thank you.
Uh, and let me know uh, if I said that name right. Ayr, Ayr. Thank you. And next one is from Connie. Hello, Connie. Don't know where you're from. Uh, the holidays are difficult for me. I was married to my ex-narcissist husband for 24 years. And our wedding anniversary is New Year's Eve. Yeesh. I'm no contact for 30 days as I'm settling all our shared financial financial responsibilities alone. Sad, I'm sorry. So I had to contact him. My lawyers have handled everything now so I can resume no contact until our stimulus check comes. Stay strong, everyone. I'm not being hoovered. As he knows, I'll expose him to everyone and my boundaries are solid. Well, that's good. That's good. I'm sorry you have to be in contact with him over this stuff. Uh, a lot of people have to do that too. And it's, it's, God, it, it's re-traumatizing in a way, isn't it? 24 years. That's an awful long time. And your anniversary is on New Year's Eve. It's been a couple days since New Year's Eve, and I hope that it went okay. I'd imagine your brain, you know, was really scared, you know, of that night, and, and maybe you were sad. I'm sorry. I hope you cried and grieved and are looking forward to next year. Um, and I hope you have help in your healing and your understanding all this, Connie. Thanks for sharing this. I know you didn't really have a question, but I just liked what you wrote. Thanks. And Connie, again, is this the same? Nope, different Connie. And Connie, this Connie's from North Carolina. Hi. Thank you, David, for your thoughtful, encouraging, and informative videos. Your 40 questions video opened my eyes. Also, I'm trying new activities as you suggest. As you suggest. Your holiday season videos got me through this painful time. Thank you so much, Connie. And thank you, Connie. Thank you very much. I'm glad that they helped a little bit. Um, this means, guys, and I, I put this on here because our brain goes by our experiences, right? That's what we build confidence. But, you know, if you're in traumatic relationships, abusive relationships, narcissistic relationships, holidays are horrible for everyone, aren't they? There's something always bad about them. And that's because holidays raise more emotions, more expectations, brings back memories for everybody, including narcissists, including abusers. They probably have bad experiences of the holidays and they're trying to reject it, won't tell you about them, and they don't want to face it. Um, they have emotions on their page, they become more emotionally unstable and they become more impulsive and they make more mistakes, more than usual, right? So, I, it says you, you got through this painful time, next year will be better, everyone. Next one, next year will be better, your brain will start saying it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And maybe we can start planning now and say, maybe you guys didn't celebrate. Maybe you guys, especially with what's going on worldwide, we didn't get to see as many loved ones or any. Maybe we're all alone, right? Maybe we didn't celebrate and decorate and give gifts and stuff. Maybe we can try to do that next holiday season and we can start planting that seed in our brain now that I'm going to have a good time and I want to plan for it and I want to celebrate and I want to decorate this way and I want to give people presents this year and I want to join people this year and and I gosh I I'm dare I say that we won't be in the same predicament as this last one that we will be able to see our families and stuff I hope jeez yeah. but uh Connie this means you should have a better holiday season next year. Thank you for sharing this with us. And that is it this week. Um, not so many questions as usual. So you guys, please ask questions, okay? Ask me. Um, like I said, you can ask me anything you want. Personal, you can ask about my services. Uh, I, I coach people and I'm currently taking new clients. You can find me at daviddemars.com and, and people keep, keep asking questions, all right? And uh, if you think that I helped you or it could help somebody else, can you support my video by giving me a thumbs up, please? Please? I get about 10% of you guys is viewing my videos or less uh, that give me thumbs up. That'd be great if you guys could just hit the like button, just one button. It'll help me a lot. Um, and you can share this video. You can put it in a playlist. You can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And, and be active. Participate down below. And just say, hi, I'm from here. Or, um, tell me what you think of my video. Or ask me questions, please. Okay? Uh, see you guys later. Thank you very much. Love yourself first.
拜。